The text that calls for our attention on this Lord's Day is our gospel reading for today from Matthew chapter 4, and especially these words. From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You're invited to be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me begin today by saying that anyone who has ever coached a sport can testify to one fact. It's much easier to coach from the stands than it is from the sidelines. You know, those obvious changes that every parent sees while watching the game that could so easily turn that terrible team into a championship team? Well, they're not as easy to implement in a couple hours of practice or a few minutes of game time as the parents might assume. That being said, let me speak as a moment as a parent that has all the answers when it comes to basketball. You know, when watching youth sports these days, sometimes it seems like what we're trying to do is teach very young kids to be able to emulate what they see college or pro players doing on TV, rather than simply trying to get them to focus on the basics. Yes, I'm suggesting that perhaps instead of yelling out Minnesota 43 and telling these kids to try to run some sort of complex play, which would first require all the kids on the court to know what play had been called, and then secondarily to actually move to the places where they're supposed to go, perhaps instead we should just be telling the guards to dribble a little closer to the ground, to keep their heads up, and to not pick up the ball until they know where they're going to pass it. We should be telling those wing players exactly how to set a nice screen and then roll off that into an open position. We should tell those post players to get down on the paint and put a body on somebody and get ready for a rebound. Why should we do all this? Well, because knowing the basics in the long run is actually quite a bit more important than trying to emulate some college or pro star. And that's especially true for athletes who yet don't have much confidence in the sport. But I don't suppose you came here today for coaching basketball theory with Pastor Hoppy. So why am I talking about this? Well, because it seems to me that we do a similar thing in our day and age when it comes to how we think about sharing our faith with other people in our daily callings, in our daily lives. You see, most people have become convinced that to do so takes sort of pro-level skills. We begin to think that we can't do it unless we've read that latest book on evangelism or we attended that seminar at church that told us just how to do it. We think that before we speak about our Lord Jesus, well, we had better be able to outsmart any atheist we meet We had better have enough wit with us to be able to put down quickly any evolutionist that happens to speak up. We think overall that we better be charismatic individuals who give off the impression that we've got it all figured out and that our joy is just so abundant that anyone could see it before we ever step out and speak of the faith. What's the end result of that? Well, most of us end up trying to just sit on the bench when it comes to sharing our faith. We kind of hope sometimes that the coach won't put us into a situation where we're supposed to do that. But today, let us instead realize that perhaps the key to sharing our faith in the real world is simply knowing the basics. You see, Even the greatest pro player, so to speak, in this game of witnessing to the wonderful nature and deeds of our God, that guy, Jesus Christ, well, he was a basics guy when it came to his proclamation as well. We heard it today from Matthew's Gospel. We were told that Jesus went over into that land of the Galileans, that dark place where he was to bring light. And how did he bring light? 
Well, he spoke these words. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. You know, in our day and age, Jesus probably would have been sued for plagiarism or at least, you know, got a ding for trademark infringement. After all, these were the very words down to the same syllable that John the Baptist had been speaking in his ministry for some time. So why was it that Jesus used the exact same words? Why not come up with a new, fancier way to do it? Well, because those basics are what God wants all to hear. Those basics are the way that God brings people to faith in his Son. In one way, you could say that anyone that has ever been sent by God to open their mouth and testify about him, everyone that's ever done that has simply proclaimed that it is the time for repentance and that the good news could be found in a kingdom that God was going to bring about. When John the Baptist and Jesus began to speak, their message was only updated just a little bit from those who spoke in the Old Testament, this same message, in order to point out exactly where they were in the salvation history of God's people, they no longer could speak about a kingdom of God that would come, but instead spoke about a kingdom of God that had come, or that was coming. Indeed, because Jesus the King was there, now they could say instead of, God will one day bring this kingdom, they could say the kingdom of God is at hand. You and I need to be able to understand these basics well in order that we might be able to communicate them in our daily lives. And there is no doubt we all need constant refreshing even on these basics. We need to meditate upon what it is that we are called to repent of in order that we might then, with humility, be able to go out and call others to repentance. And we need to hear time and time again from the scriptures that indeed God has brought his kingdom right to us. That he's made that kingdom be at hand in our lives. That he does that every time the spirit works faith through his word and the sacraments are given out according to Christ's institution. For if we know that, that we can share that with others, with courage and with conviction. Yes, when you gather around the word of God, know this. It's not just for you. It is for you as well. But when you gather around God's word, whether it be here in church or individually or as families in your homes, think of that sort of as doing the basic drills to be ready to share the faith. Yes, that word is not for you alone. It is for you, but it's meant to be shared with others as well. But I want you to know this. You don't need pro skills to start talking about Jesus in your everyday life. If you can tell someone that this world is broken because of the evil in the world, you are ready to speak. If you know that Jesus has come to bind up that brokenness and that he has come To make all things new, you are ready to speak. If you can simply say that you're a sinner and that Jesus has saved you, you're ready to speak. If you can tell all that they should repent of their sins because the kingdom of God is at hand, you are ready to speak. Oh, I suppose if you get those basic skills down so well, You could move on to learning a few more complex things as well. You could go ahead and pick up a few books or go to a seminar and learn a few things that might help you. But know this, the basic skills, those are the only ones that God has placed his power behind. The proclamation of the simple gospel is what Paul says is the dynamite of God, the power of God to bring about faith. Oh, it wouldn't hurt you to go to a gathering where people are talking about how to speak about the faith in your daily life. It certainly could not hurt 
if you learned a little bit more about how the unbelieving world thinks in our days in order that you might interact with them and defend the faith against error. It wouldn't hurt you even just to learn how to be a better listener or a better communicator. But all those things, they're not needful to begin. Only sharing that very basic message of repentance regarding sin and joy concerning the coming of God's kingdom is the thing that will lead one to faith. Yes, the other skills, they might make you a little more likely to engage in conversation and perhaps at times make the person you want to speak with a little more likely to hear as well. But only the gospel can bring one to faith. So run the drills. Run them daily. Learn anew every day of what God calls sin and who he has sent to be the Savior of the world. Do it in your homes and do it together when we gather here on Sunday mornings. For then you'll be ready to play the game, so to speak. Wherever you have opportunity, in your daily lives, whether that's at school or at work or in your home, or just when you meet someone along the way. Indeed, then you will be ready to play in that game that the Spirit has chosen you to play in, that game that the Spirit has prepared you to play in. But I think we always need to say this when we talk about sharing our faith. Whenever we talk about it, I don't know about you, but there's some guilt that comes along because we think immediately of those times that we haven't shared the faith, though we know we had opportunity. So I want you to know this today. All those times that you have not shared the basic truth with other, with others, Christ today comes to forgive you. So just admit those mistakes today. For those times when you've used every excuse in the book about why you couldn't do it, or at least not yet, Christ is here today to cleanse you. So don't try to hide those hesitating moments. For every cowardly moment you have had, every missed opportunity in your mind that brings you doubt or causes you guilt today, Jesus is here to cast those away. So just come clean to him. You do realize what I just said to you, right? Yes, even after all my seminary training and after the various seminars and lectures I've attended, in the end, what do I say to you every week? Well, it's the same thing that John the Baptist said. The same thing that Jesus said. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. That's what I tell you each week. And why do I do it? Well, Because it's great news. I'm not telling you to repent or else. I'm telling you repent because the kingdom of God is here for you. God wants you to live in that place forever with his blessing. That is great news. And so what you have heard today, go out and proclaim. Go tell others. Go take this light that is burned in this church today and share that light with all in darkness. Amen.